Well, what's up, y'all? Got another one for you. It's been a hot day here at NBS Weldon. Check this out. I got a frame here for a quad bike. Uh, got a Texera gusset kit. My buddy's fixing this up for his boy. We've done one of these last year. Um, his boy races these quads and we did one of these gusset kits i don't remember what brand the the gusset kit was but last year i think it was probably around bow season he brought me a quad frame and i welded in a gusset kit on it uh similar to this setup this one looks a little more elaborate and i see some of the gussets are uh coped pipes uh but anyway we did this one we did one of these before and uh the boy had been racing that bike they got the frame powder coated put the whole thing together had an awesome motor in it it was i saw pictures of it it was it was pretty awesome uh but the boy's buddy uh was riding that quad and crashed it and, and totaled it like my buddy said one of the front tires was eight or ten inches behind the other one, so it's trashed. Uh, but the main thing is, the boy that wrecked the four-wheeler is all right. He didn't get hurt bad, so so that's good. Uh, I say if they crash quads and stay off dope, then that's fine. Just go ahead and crash quads. But anyways, uh, we're going to be doing another one, and we're going to be welding in this gusset kit. Um there's also a couple of other things he wants to uh he wants to fill this center section here in with plate pretty much solid i got to come up with something for that to really stiffen that all the way through here other than maybe a hole you know in here to get a socket in you know to the bottom of that uh that shaft that goes through there and this one's got a there's a motor mount see there right here there should be a motor mount like that i'm gonna have to fabricate one of those um and i put a mic on this one and it's a 14 gauge uh 14 gauge plate i'll have to i'll have to make one of those out of also um the way these foot pegs go on these uh be a foot peg like this um bolts on here like that well on this frame the threaded bung that's supposed to be right here it's gone um so I'm going to have to cut this open a little bit and weld a nut uh, inside of here um, so that you would have threads down inside of here like there is right there to put the foot peg on. Uh, when I did this other gusset kit on the other one, I did buy some smaller MIG wire than what I usually use. Um, I bought some, uh, I generally run an, uh, an 030 in these machines. This is my old Millermatic. Uh, everybody likes this machine the best. Uh, this is the newer Millermatic, and my neighbor named this one named this one the little bitch because he, he couldn't get it set to, to to weld as good as this one now other guys that have welded with both of these they say the same thing they say my old millermatic 252 welds better than my new millermatic 252 um i agree that this machine welds better than that one but i'm I'm not one of these guys that's like, I'm not an arc Nazi, you know, uh, my background, I started welding, I welded for companies for a decade, and I welded with whatever they had, 
I was 25 or 26 years old when I very first got a welding machine of my own. So, I like I say, I mean, I got used to using what I had and making the best of it, and I'm not one of these arc Nazis. I know you you talk to pipeliners, a lot of pipeliners, you talk to these guys, and, and they'll talk about their machines buttery, and they stack this and dig that that's great i mean i i appreciate a good running weld machine as much as anybody but if all we got two car batteries a set of jumper cables and a handful of rusty rods i'll make it work uh i just don't freak out about this machine welds better than that one or whatever now whenever uh something like this quad bike whenever i did this gusset kit before I got some of this smaller 030 wire and it comes, I bought the tiny spool. Uh, obviously you can get it in a spool that big, but I, I use that 030 wire so rarely that it wouldn't make sense for me to have a spool that big. But the thing that I ran into is, you know, this is what's supposed to be on there to run a spool like that in my Millermatic 252s. Well, the hole in this smaller spool is a tiny little hole and you know it won't go on that so there's a bunch of now i don't know if they actually make an adapter to run these spools on these machines but i know that i did i mean i got some pvc board that's left over i got a couple of those that's left over from cutting pvc board with a with a hole saw there's a two inch pvc coupling here inside of that there's a, 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 a sink drain coupling. I think it's an inch and a quarter that's taken up a little bit of space in here. And then, the, you know, the spring that comes inside of this thing, it's in there to put tension on that. So if you need to do this on your MIG, you know, you just make it work. Figure it out. Get you some whatever you got laying around, put it together and make it work. So, yeah, I can adjust the tension with this nut a little bit got some spring tension on it but it welds good like that and um so that's what um that 030 uh super arc link and l56 is what i'm gonna be running on this to do the welding and uh my buddy that brought me this uh when he asked if i could do it and i told him you know i got a list of stuff i'm just trying to work on it every day to get things done on my list uh i told him it would be you know 10 10 to 14 days before i could probably get to it with the stuff i had on my list at the time and he said i told him i said bring it to me this weekend and i'll put you on the list and what he said was he said well put will you put me on the list and i'll bring it to you next weekend and that'll give me time to clean it up uh and i said sure sounds good i was really hoping that it would come back all cleaned up and it looks like he took, uh, maybe a little while, he took a, a power brush or something on a grinder and, and did that little bit of that. But overall, I mean, you can see this just come off a bike. It's got, it's got hay seeds in it. Um, and one of the things I got to do, uh, I got to make marks where these gussets will go and then grind sand that that coating that's on there i gotta get that on something like this you want to get that clear down to shiny bare steel and I, you know i notice on on paint that's shiny like this stuff is soapstone don't write on it very good uh it's hard to see i've got I've got about every marking tool known to man. If you go through everything I've got to, to mark on stuff. The thing that, that marks on this the best, where you can like put all your gussets up there and make marks to figure out where you want to grind. The thing that seems to work the best is like a Sharpie paint marker like this. But the problem with these is if you're marking on dirt you're only going to get to mark one or two or a couple and this thing will get buggered up and you'll need a a truckload of them to get everything marked 
So what you want to do is clean it up. Like I wish it was already cleaned up, but evidently uh, it's not. So I'm going to power wash this thing. And then I can make my marks where all these gussets go. Uh, so I'll know where to sand it down a bare metal and sand it down a bare metal. And I can weld all them gussets in. Now these kits, you can see there's, there's a lot of parts there. Uh, they'll come with a diagram uh, if it's a good one. And so you get, get organized, get your stuff laid out. Uh, you can see here like this part has a number and there's one of them this part has a number and there's nine of them and uh, So the first thing you do is lay all these out make sure you got that part make sure there's nine of them and You can see what I did here if that part is 004 I wrote 004 on the part so when I go over and I'm looking at the drawing uh you know, I, I won't have to go back to this. I'll just say, well, this is an 005, so I find 005, where's it go, whatever, you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to power wash this thing. We'll get going on it, and we'll get her, uh, get her gusseted it up, get some parts made for it, get her welded up. So we'll check back on that later. Check this out before we do any major welding here. All the gussets are in place. Got that nut welded in where we needed the thread. Fabricated a motor mount to match this one. I think that hole I drilled in that's a little bit small. It's uh three eighths but my bigger standard size is too big that's some kind of metric hole i'm not gonna worry about it now you can run a bit through that whenever uh just make a note of it also made this piece here where he wanted to stiffen this completely up now the kit came with a piece for this 019 would have went right here. This is the piece I made. I drilled those holes in it. The one hole, of course, to line up to that steering shaft, but the other ones are just let the mud out, I guess. That part right there, actually, uh, they give you this to go in the front of that, and they give you this to go in the middle. So there's two parts we won't be using because we we ran a plate the whole way in here. These side gussets are pretty neat how they made those. And this gusset kit uh, from Texera, it uh, it takes a little while to figure out where everything goes. It takes quite a while to clean all the paint off but everything fit really good there was maybe two parts that i sanded on to get them to go in there uh a little better but overall uh, you find where they go and clean it up and go now one thing i ran into when i was tacking this uh, and I remember running into this the last time. These tubes that are sealed, uh, when you weld on them, they'll blow out on you because this air inside the sealed tube, this air in here gets hot. And of course, you're welding hot. Even just my tacks are hot enough, it would blow out at me. 
and you're like well, what just happened but you realize that pressure builds up inside these tubes from the heat you're putting into it and then you're welding on it with a molten puddle which is a liquid and it, it'll blow it right out uh, anything sealed shut when you're welding on it you're going to have that to be concerned about be concerned about pressure building up inside of it this tube right here that's a sealed tube uh and there's a lot of welding to do here you look at welding all the way around this gusset you put a lot of pressure in that so you can see i drilled a tiny little hole right there up underneath of this this one i drilled a tiny little hole so you can drill a tiny little hole and let that air pressure out and it's no issue on something when you're welding on something that's sealed and if you're welding on something and you have to drill a hole in it like that and uh you actually need need it to be sealed maybe you want to keep water out of it or whatever uh let the let the part cool and go back and weld the hole shut real quick and you'll be fine uh the reason it blows out is because you put a bunch of heat in it and the hot air inside the tube builds pressure but if you let it cool down if you wanted to come back to this right here and just quick weld that hole shut you're fine to do that it's not going to hurt a thing wild looking gusset there all right so i don't want to uh heat this up and cool it down and heat it up and cool it down any more than i can help and i know it's late enough that i'm not going to finish welding this so i'm not going to start on it uh i'll come back uh, tomorrow and and when i start welding on it i won't stop till it's done uh that's my plan moving on gonna make a couple notes on this uh quad frame real quick uh before i get going i i, I was putting uh pictures and video together last night and in the first video i made i said something that wasn't right uh, i said that i generally run 030 wire i don't uh what's normally in my mig machines is 035 uh on this thin metal on this quad bike i am going to run 030 and that's what i was talking about about using the smaller spool because i, I don't use 030 very often and that's why i had the tiny spool that i had to rig up uh in the machine now that's something to think about how um size differences and heat differences are relative to the size of what you're using with 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 all types of welding and what i mean by that is there doesn't seem like there's as much difference it doesn't seem like much difference between 030 and 035 when you say 030 and 035 and that's you know looking at wire sizes uh for your mig but there is a big difference and the reason there's a big difference welding wise between 030 and 035 wire is because it's so small as a matter of fact i would say as far as the you know the way it reacts to your work there's probably you would probably notice as much difference between 030 and 035 as you would 035 and 045 even though the difference between 035 and 045 is twice as much uh reason being when you're down at 030 you're in a smaller size uh and it's so small that it doesn't take much to make a big difference uh it's the same way relatively with your heat settings with wire and rods both if you're running 030 wire and uh, you know you go to adjust your machine a half a volt is a lot um if you were running one sixteenth inch solid wire, you know, a great big solid wire, a half a volt's nothing. Somebody, you, somebody could walk over there and turn you up or down a half a volt and you'd barely notice it. If you were running great big solid wire like one sixteenth, um, and you, you were, say you were a little cold and you wanted to turn it up, I'd turn it up two volts. You know, it would take that much with one sixteenth to, to see where you need to fine tune from because with one sixteenth, a half a volt or a volt's not much with 
with 030 mig wire one volt is a lot um and it's a lot that it's a lot like that with uh stick welding too um if you're running a 1 8 inch 7018 rod on your stick machine um if you need to turn it up a little bit and it's not quite hot enough you need to turn it up you might turn it up 10 amps uh if you're running 3 16 or quarter inch jet rod or something like that and you turn it up 10 amps you'll barely even notice that if you're running quarter inch jet and you don't have and i don't have enough heat like i want it hotter I would go 25 or 30 amps minimum to, to see a difference in that rod because like I'm trying to say, it's, it's relative to the size. Um, anyway, getting going on this quad bike, uh, I did build this, fabricate this motor mount and I, I, the, the guy that brought me this, my buddy that brought me this also, um, he he had this is for, this is a piece he had cut out from the frame of the bike that I had gusseted before, and um, he brought it just to show me what the way the motor mounts are because on this one you know this was broke off. He he brought this to show me, and I remember doing this because like these gussets where my thumb is at right here and right here those gussets were part of the kit that we welded in on this 125 raptor uh when we did this last quad bike frame and um you can see that this one here that they're doing is a 250 so obviously it's it's wider inside of here um i was able to get a good mic measurement on this um before I cut that other broken piece off. But uh, what I had happened to remember was when we did this gusset kit on the 125, that gusset kit came with these plates. See, that's an extra plate right there that we welded in for the motor mount. It came with two of them, so each side got an extra plate. And at some point, and what they were doing, this piece got a hole drilled in it. Uh, I'm not sure what that's for, but anyway. What I was thinking was, if that other gusset kit came with this doubler plate on this on this motor mount for the 125, why don't we have one for the for the 250? Because I can see how there you might want a doubler right there. Because you're looking at uh, not a lot of metal right here. Now I'm thinking about that engine here driving, driving the rear axle on that thing, and you know that that engine sitting in there trying to twist. And if you're in low gear and let off the throttle downhill, it back the other way. And I think I'm going to make a set of doubler plates to put in here. I don't think that would hurt a damn thing, you know. I mean, this one had it, and there had to be a reason. I don't know why this this Texera kit for the 250 we got doesn't have it, but I can't see that hurting anything as long as that doubler plate goes on the outside. I mean, you might need a little longer bolt or something, but, I mean, other than that, I think it should have it. So I'm going to make a couple of those put them on there and then i'll then i'll go to welding out these gussets later i got a piece of paper and i cut it to the width of the inside of that motor mount and i've held it in there what i'm hoping you can see here i drew over top of that with a regular pencil you can see how that uh, made a mark to show me where that hole is and also uh, where I'm going to cut it off at the end. So that's a good little pattern. I'm going to make a couple of those. And them doubler plates are in there. 
and I put this block I cut back up there for my inside measurement and it's just uh, it's just perfect of course you know if you're setting a motor in one of these um, it probably doesn't hurt especially with the doubler you could take a small hammer and tap these out a little bit if your motor uh, doesn't look like it's going in there you know those would bend out a little and then your bolt would squeeze them back together you wouldn't want to go crazy with it i'm just saying enough you know but uh this block i cut this block at the measurement you know the exact measurement uh that i got before i cut the other motor mount off and it's just uh it's just perfect where it's so uh, another thing was I was questioning when I when I made this piece if I drilled the right size hole. And when I was doing that, I was using the bit index I had that that, that uh, was in sixteenths. So I dug out a different index I had that was in sixty fourths, and I found I believe that a thirteen thirty two is is the closest thing I've got to work for that because I'm pretty sure it's going to take one of these M tens. And when I did the 1332, uh, that's perfect. So it's time to weld this thing up. I'm going to get to welding. Hey y'all, <clears throat> this quad frame is ready to race, ready to put together, it's all welded up, did the repairs, put in the Texera gasket kit, uh, or gusset kit, not gasket kit, um, I do have some parts left, now this gusset and this gusset that came with the kit that we didn't use, they would be parts, this one would be right here, on, on, you know, normal application, this one would be here, and this would go in the middle of, of the frame here, to stiffen this up. Now, my buddy that's building this quad, he wanted this plate, he wanted it plated solid, so this is a plate, this is a plate that I made, um, now I just used 14 gauge steel and I cut the holes in it and um, so that's why we didn't use these two uh, and then there's two other parts these two parts we didn't use and what that's all about uh, the drawing shows these going here and here now I contacted uh, my buddy that owns this frame that's building the bike and i said uh there's not enough information in the directions to show me exactly where to locate these and he said the same thing that i was already thinking he said don't use those they're probably extra motor mounts you'd have to have the motor to put them on uh which i don't have the real handsome engine builder up the road's probably got the motor and 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 i'm not going to bother him because as handsome as he is he can get pretty ugly if you bother him when he's working so i'm not messing with that guy but anyways uh what i'm realizing about these extra motor mounts 
now that I'm thinking about it, is you remember I was talking earlier about how on the kit I did before on these rear motor mounts, there was a double plate that came with it. And on this one, after seeing that double plate that was on the other one we did, I decided to make my own double plate gussets and double plate these rear mounts. Well, since I've double plated that and we're not using these, we're, this is probably doing the same thing. Uh, so Texera has burned these out probably because there's a places, two places on that 250 motor where you could, if you wanted to, you could add motor mounts right here on a different place in the frame. But we've gusseted, uh, these rear motor mounts and we double plated them. So I really, I think we're doing the same thing as, as, as using these because uh, we've done a lot that's going to keep the motor uh, there in place. Um, now on this frame, this frame was not, is not, was not in as good a shape as the other one I did. I found places on this frame that were broke and, and had to fix them that probably would not have been broke if the gasket kit was in there. Um, so if you ever wonder if you need one of these gasket kits, if you if you run wide open and run hard, you probably do. I would say especially if it's a Yamaha. Um, because I just say that because within the last year, uh, this is the second uh, quad frame I've done. And there was a recall repair that I did on a Yamaha side-by-side -side frame that was just flat out poor quality control on Yamaha's part, whoever did the frame for them. Um, but anyway, another thing on this particular one that I noticed up here, this part right here, I believe is a steering stop. Uh, this steering stop was about to break off this bike and where the steering stop was on here, they had welded the front and welded the back. But when this steering stop operates you steer all the way one way and you hit it from the side you steer all the way the other way you hit it from the other side well neither one of the outer edges of this was welded that's a problem because no matter how much welds in the middle the way this metal is uh the way paper is the way plastic is the way materials are if you start to tear something um once it's cracked and be, and begin to beginning to tear from there it just peels like a zipper um and that's why you'll see on a lot of stuff they'll put holes in things they'll use thicker metal and then put holes in it, rather than using thinner metal and making it solid well the reason they do that is because if a crack was to form in something like this going long ways when it hits that hole it'll stop and it'll take more force to restart a crack on the radius on the other side. So on something like this steering stop, I actually think it would be more important to weld these two edges than the two sides that they did weld, which on this one, now it's welded all the way around. So that's good. Uh, and there's a lot of gussets with this kit that went on the steering around this area and, and right under the steering on the frame. Uh, so that, that should be uh that should be a big help i like the kit you know it fit good um but this frame definitely needed the kit um couple tips on the welding if you're going to weld something like this uh, i do recommend the 030 mig wire um i don't i don't think there would be anything wrong with tig welding something like this me, myself, I would not take this. The MIG is fine. Um, wouldn't be anything wrong with taking it, though. Uh, but one note on using this smaller wire on this thinner metal. You know, just about every... A lot of people that MIG weld will use these these MIG pliers. And these are nice. Uh, there's a... You can use these long ends to clean out your gas cup really well. Um there's a an opening right here 
that is nice to grab a contact tip with. There's an opening here that's real nice to grab a gas cup. And you got your snippers to snip your wire off. Now, when I welded this frame, I used these and I took these tiny cutters and I put them in my other hand, whichever hand I wasn't welding with, and I didn't set them down. Um, I was doing two things by holding on to these the whole time. One is it reminded me to snip the wire. With this in my hand, it reminded me to snip the wire. And I think with this smaller MIG wire and this uh, thin metal and, and, and the smaller work, it's probably a little bit more important to snip that MIG wire every time to get a little better start uh, on your welds. So if you keep this in your hand, it might remind you, you know, if you stop for, I'd say if you stop for more than two seconds, you're probably better off just to snip that wire. Because sometimes it, where the way it's balled up on the end or maybe got some slag on it or something, uh, it may not start as good if you don't snip it. So keeping something small in your hand that's small enough you can weld with it in your hand obviously it's more convenient because you got them right there but <clears throat> it also serves as a reminder to remind you to snip it every time you do a restart and that's beneficial and um, with all welding another thing I want to mention just because this is such a good example of it with all welding something you want to keep in mind is you want to make your starts where you need the least amount of heat and then finish your weld where you need the most amount of heat. And this gusset right here is a prime example of that. If you look at this gusset, what a sharp point it comes to here at the end. There's not a lot of metal right here. Not a lot of metal at all in comparison to right here where you have all the metal of this gusset plus all of the metal that's in this tube where you have one tube going this way and one tube going that way. So with all welding and especially this, you want to start welding here where you need the least amount of heat and then finish welding here where you need the most amount of heat. Uh, that's going to help a bunch because if you were to start welding here, and, and head towards this super thin point out here at the end, you're making a huge mistake, man. Uh, the, the, all the while that you're welding across here, this little gusset's getting hotter and hotter, and by the time you get to the end of it, you'll probably burn that point right off. You don't want to do that. Uh, so think about that. And another tip that applies to this that I would say is true uh with any welding you'll always hear people say if you're going to weld make yourself comfortable and that's true but it's only half true there's another half to that that i think is critical um don't only make yourself comfortable when you start uh think before you start welding where you're going to start and where you're going to finish or where you're going to stop and make yourself the most comfortable where you're going to stop because that's going to give you the best result throughout your weld. If you have to be uncomfortable during a weld, do it at the beginning. Make Position yourself so you're the most uncomfortable when you start if that makes you the most comfortable when you stop. Because you're gonna get you're gonna gain physical fatigue as you try to make this weld. And being more comfortable at the end is gonna benefit you more than being comfortable in the beginning. And the way I kind of think of it, I think of it as getting cocked. I'm gonna get if I'm gonna weld from right here to right here. Same with torch cutting. I'm gonna get myself in a position where I'm comfortable here at the end, and then I'm gonna get cocked. So I start here, travel, travel, get to the end where I'm nice and comfortable and, and make my stuff. So 
This one's done. We're going on to the next job. Y'all have a good one. Me, Diane. Why do I keep saying gasket when I mean gusset? I keep saying gasket when I mean gusset. I just seen that. I did it again on that. And I don't know why I'm doing that. But you know what I meant. Is the thing. Like. You know what I meant, me, Diane? She likes to do headbutts. Sorry about that. You know what I meant. 